in Johannesburg. This is The Real Economy Report. It has been 68 years since the world-famous Mrs. Pless was discovered in South Africa in 1947 by paleontologist Dr. Robert Broom in Stagfontein Karteng. Now, new research is trying to prove that Mrs. Pless was actually male. Anine Vermeulen has the story. New research, primarily conducted by paleontologists Jose Braga and Francis Thackeray, is attempting to prove that Mrs. Pless is actually Mr. Pless. The duo have been working closely together with the South African Nuclear Energy Corporation, or NEXA, to determine what they believe is the actual gender of the fossil. Well, if you look at the external anatomy of Mrs. Pless, you can see certain features, including a bump <laughs> between the eyes and just above the nose. This is what we call glabella. And of all the specimens that have been called Australopithecus africanus, Mrs. Pless has the largest glabella. And that is clear evidence that that is a male. Thackeray points out that it is clear from CT scans that the individual was an adolescent at the time of death, and although CT scans have been undertaken in the past, they never had the high resolution that is currently feasible. He notes that previous CT images were recorded with slice thickness of 1 or 2 millimeters, but new scanners allow for submillimeter resolution, and techniques for analysis are improving rapidly. He adds that the most recent scans, analyzed at Paul Sabatier University in Toulouse, France, are based on applications of technology of the kind that is also used to analyze images obtained from satellites in space. The latest imagery, Thackeray notes, shows asymmetry on the left side of the brain of Mrs. Pless. This implies that the fossil was probably right-handed, since it is the left side of the brain that controls functions on the right side of the body. He adds that he has also studied Mrs. Pless's canine sockets, which have further contributed to his findings. We know that in many primates, males generally have large canines. When Mrs. Pless was found in 1947, Robert Broom recorded it and recorded the width of the canine sockets in the case of Mrs. Pless, and they were relatively large. Unfortunately, in the 1960s, uh, a museum uh, paleontologist was using dilute acetic acid and did some damage to Mrs. Blaise, which uh, digested away some of the bone, most unfortunately. But if you go to Mrs. Blaise today at the Ditsong National Museum of Natural History, where it is curated very carefully, and if you measure the, the socket for the canine, it looks relatively small which suggests it's female. And Mrs. Pless was known as Mrs. Pless ever since 1947 when Broom described it. However, if you go to his measurements, originally in 1950, it's large. And a large canine socket says that it's male. Furthermore, what we've done is to take Mrs. Pless to Nexa, where we've been able to do uh, scanning in a non-destructive manner and we can look at the internal anatomy. We are looking at the roots of the teeth and the roots of the teeth are telling us something really interesting. We're exploring this further uh, which will tell us whether or not those features confirm that Mrs. Blaise was male. Professor Jose Braga says that there have been questions surrounding Mrs. Pless's gender for a while, and measurements are indicative of it being male. In fact, uh, there are different ways of looking at a, a fossil. You can look at uh, it uh, and investigate uh, its anatomy with your own eyes, but you can also use very special devices, like the ones that you that are used in hospitals, medical CT scans. But what we did is that we used an industrial micro CT scan uh, thanks to the help of uh, NEXA, the Nuclear Energy Corporation of South Africa. And with the help of people at NEXA, we could uh, slice virtually the skull of Mrs. Pless, previously called Mrs. Pless, in very thin slices, less than a, a millimeter. In, in fact, we could slice the skull of Mrs. Pless using very thin slice, like uh, 10 micron, going down to 10 micron, which is one tenth of the thickness of your hairs. And in doing so, we can then look inside the skull and try to investigate the anatomy of very special features inside the skull. Doing so, we could uh, 
investigate features which are located close to the inner ear, in the area of the inner ear, and then discover that Mrs. Pless could well be Master Pless because of the size of some of these features which are known to be much bigger in males than in females in some living species like humans but also our closely affiliated uh, living species like the chimpanzees and the gorillas. That's Krimo Media's Real Economy Reports. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.